Raw milk is really bad for you, right? You'll get listeria and all sorts of bacteria. Well, actually, several studies have found that the problem with dairy consumption is actually the ultra pasteurization and the heat involved because it actually denatures some of the very enzymes that help you metabolize or digest the milk. One study we're going to talk about today that I think is quite fascinating titled The Protective Effect of Farm Milk Consumption on Childhood Asthma and Atopy, known as the Gabriella Study. And essentially what this study found is raw milk is associated with reduced childhood asthma and allergies. And in my household, we don't do pasteurized dairy. We don't do the ultra pasteurized, low fat dairy. We do whole fat raw dairy for my daughter. She's 10 years old and her health has really benefited as, as a result of that. And periodically I've been consuming this raw milk and I felt like in the last year I've put on a lot more strength and muscle and haven't done a whole lot differently. I do carb cycling and things, maybe a little bit more carbohydrates than I normally eat, but there has been some studies over the years with regards to raw milk consumption, and I just wanted to share with you some of the science, finding that the problem with dairy, why some people might be sensitive to dairy, uh, don't digest dairy as, as well, is not a lactase deficiency. It's how the milk is being processed in an unnatural way that causes people to have an aberrant post-meal response to the milk. So it turns out that raw milk, raw whole unpasteurized milk has a lot more bioactive peptides and nutrients and also bacteria that are considered favorable compared to ultra pasteurized milk. And this is important to recognize. I think many people are scared of consuming raw milk. Oh my gosh, if I consume this, I'm going to get listeria. What's going to happen? Uh, look, people have been consuming raw milk for a very, very long time. And as this study actually found, raw milk consumption uh, had a protective effect on asthma, on childhood asthma, as well as uh, allergies. And I think that's important to recognize because we know that childhood asthma and allergies and atopy are on the rise. And so there's another pilot study, a preclinical study titled Milk Processing Increases the Allergenicity of Cow's Milk, Preclinical Evidence Supported by Human Proof of Concept Provocation Pilot Study. I know it's a big way of talking about how it's actually the, the pasteurization of milk. Now you can see how as cities get more industrialized, more populated, uh, the impetus to pasteurize milk sort of made sense when, you know, we're trying to di distribute milk all throughout the country and stuff like that. Maybe from a distribution standpoint and logistics standpoint, it increases the shelf life. If you pasture it, if you kill all of the bacteria, not just listeria and potential pathogens, but if you eradicate all the bacteria, maybe it has a better shelf life. But does that mean that the pasteurized dairy is better for human consumption? Well, the available evidence suggests just not. And this might be why people who consume dairy, particularly the ultra pasteurized heated dairy, have problems. And so I would encourage you, there's various websites that I can link below that will help you find raw milk in your local area. Now, I think this is a little bit more important for people who are physically active, who are lifting weights, who are exercising. If you're sedentary and you're overweight, you know, maybe you could benefit from raw milk, from the potential um, immunoglobulins that are in the milk. But I found for growing children, adolescents, and physically active people, this can be a source of bioactive peptides and neuroprotective peptides. Max Lugavir has talked a lot about how doesn't it make sense that the milk fat globulin in milk helps with the developing brain of the baby cow, and that might actually help in adults potentially prevent some of the neurodegenerative conditions like dementia and Alzheimer's. We don't have a lot of human studies to actually look at that, but it does... Uh, you know, make sense when you think about it from an evolutionary uh, standpoint in the mechanisms here. So I think, you know, the, the conclusion here is a lot of people are scared of consuming dairy because we know that um, there's a, about one in three people don't have enzymes like lactase and so forth to break down the milk. But we also need to recognize that the milk uh, does come with enzymes and also bacteria to help enable the milk to be better digested, but those enzymes can be changed through homogenization and the ultra pasteurization techniques that um, help with the, the shelf life, but may not help with the bioactivity or the absorption of the milk. So I just wanted to share these two studies with you. There is evidence to suggest that raw milk is actually different uh, when it comes to the benefits and actually preventing potentially uh, the development of allergies and atopy in children. Uh, and these children, by the way, did not live on the farm. They were consuming farm milk, but they didn't live on the farm. So they were controlling for that whole hygiene hypothesis and the fact that children that live on farms are naturally more exposed to different bacteria and that uh, education by those bacteria might influence the immune system and prevent allergies. But these were children not living on a farm, but consuming whole raw farm milk 
And guess what? They had a lower prevalence of allergies and atopy. So I think this is important because we know that, you know, asthma, allergies, atopy, uh, these are problems that uh, increase the background inflammation in the immune system. And that's not healthy. That can predispose people to more adult onset diseases, even autoimmunity uh, as life goes on. So you might be able to help your children if you have them by giving them farm milk, you know, using the websites that are linked in the description below, uh, finding out a local farmer. Uh, here in Washington state, it's pretty easy to find. I know in Canada, raw milk is illegal. In the state of New York, it's illegal. I have friends and, and my cousin used to, you know, literally on Sunday morning at like six in the morning in Brooklyn, there's a white van that comes around. You pay them cash and you get the farm milk and stuff. I, it's crazy. You can go to the grocery store and buy the worst disease forming food and that's legal, but you can't buy raw milk. I mean, that tells you a little bit something there. So uh, anyway, I think it's just another tool in our toolbox to consider for those of you that do dairy. Um, there's bioactive peptides, milk fat globulin, uh, various things that are good for both our immune system, gut health, and also possibly improving muscle protein synthesis and recovering from exercise. So I would urge you, I would implore you to consider this periodically. Uh, once a week, we get three gallons and go through this through a, a couple different people in our neighborhood. And um, we've all benefited to, uh, tremendously from this and it tastes so much better than the ultra pasteurized homogenized milk that you get at the grocery store. So I would love to know what you think in the comments below, friends. Thanks as always for tuning in. Thanks for sharing this video. Thanks for hitting that like button. Let me know in the comments if you've benefited from raw milk. I would love to hear from you. We'll catch you on a future episode down the road. Bye now.